Okay. Okay, okay let's go. On the <laughs> So here we have some elk tracks, and these look like they're fresh from last night. So the elk are one of the species we see on the lake beds that are that are using these lake beds to um, eat the bushes and and browse on the branches of different species. Are there some traces of browsing here, or not at all? Did you see these? Yes. Species? So they don't typically. Um, eat this species. They do eat uh, the, the willow here. And um, let's see. Actually don't see any browse on this particular one. Um, maybe some old spots here, but nothing fresh. So even yeah. if it's old, maybe you can just show us an okay. old one. Places of growth. Yeah. Like here, they would have um, chewed the branch off here, and so it can change some of the architecture of how these plants are growing. Mm -hmm. Where they? Um, <coughs> where where are you? Uh, concern about the the, the, neg the negative impact of these hungulets uh, on the, the the species that mm -hmm. the, the the veg team pla are planted. Yeah. So the one of the original concerns when the revegetation crew came out was that they were going to be planting all these very young um, plants, and that the deer and elk might really impact their ability to establish. But as you can see, um, despite their activities on the lake bed, they've really been able to grow just fine. And one of the things that we have been monitoring is whether or not the activities of the elk and deer are changing the architecture of the plants. So when they start chewing some of these branches, it can make the plants grow in a different way than a straight shoot up. And some of these are plants that were planted, and other ones are plants that have come in on their own. And so some of those, when we've had a big pulse of plants start growing together, then a lot of times, even though the deer and elk are out there, they're not necessarily able to really impact their growth. Uh, the, the, the reason why they did not have a huge impact is, is about maybe the, the, the speed of grow, growing, uh, the plant growing, or what, what, why did they not have a huge impact on this? Um, I think we think it's mostly because of just a, a swamping effect. So there are so many plants that were coming in at once that even though the deer and elk were using those plants, they weren't eating them at a rate where they were causing a major effect um, in terms of them being able to establish. There are places uh, closer to the river channel where um, the revegetation team put in a number of, of very small plants, and there we've seen uh, much more intensive effects. So where you have individual plants and they don't have a whole bunch of plants around them to help protect them. So it has to more to do with the, the density of plants. Yeah. And in another way, uh, is, the, is there a, a positive impact uh, coming from the, the, the poop uh, as a fertilizer or something like that? Is it a, a sort of a, a, a return mm -hmm. to the, the sanders because they... Yeah. Yes. So the, yes, so the deer and elk uh, pellets, their scat, can uh, indeed provide some nitrogen into the soil. So they can have a positive impact. It's not something we've studied at this point, but it is something that uh, has been shown in some other work. Yeah. Thank you very much. So the idea is that you guys are from each on my side and you go towards here. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's let's pass it here. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting ready. Maybe can we go this way a bit more? Yeah, but I think the traps are over there. Okay. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll follow you. Okay. Um, but we can go out this way and then we'll kind of turn. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Whenever you want. Okay. All right.
So there's eight traps. And uh, two, four, six. And then, yeah. So I can just check them. J'aurais besoin de. Bah, du coup, on a pris tout de suite. De... Ils sont vides de toute façon. Ils sont vides. On peut les laisser Ils sont là, les oui. côtés. Oh, uh, on se ralentit un petit peu, qu'est-ce que. Hein um, Ok. So you have one animal. Ok. This one's open. I'm going to keep the open one centered. This one. Okay, great. And then we have two more traps. There they go. Uh -huh. Over here. We all had so much more experience when we were doing this daily. We need to do every single day, but it's been two years. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I mean, even, yeah, well, no matter what species I'm working on, it takes a while to get back into it, yeah. handling it. I noticed the same thing. I was going, okay, how do I do this normally? Well, and I'm, because you pinch them in the bag. I do pinch them in the bag. And I, I'm not sure that I did that, and I'm trying to remember what I used to do. If I, I just grabbed their tape, oh, I think I used to take them out with the Pasola scale. I pinch them yeah. through the bag, then I hook, then I peel the bag back, and then I, I put the scale on the tail, yeah. Yeah. and then I weigh them. Because I usually, w I didn't do it this way, but I usually weigh them before I measure the tail, just so I know whether it's a juvenile or an adult. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. So this one, uh, was it, was in the, um, the open Yes, area. it was caught in the more okay. open area. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. They like to jump right back into the box, so you have to act fast. <laughs> That's a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wake up, could mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. This one's the ones that's rusty. Oh, okay. here's the one. Here's the light. Okay. 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 So, okay. Rebecca, could you yes. tell me what is this species and where did you find it? Okay. Um, so this species, um, this mouse was found out in the open habitat, which is still dominated by gravels and sand. And so this is one of our mouse species, and we can tell them apart by the length of the tail. And this one, its tail looks rather short. So my guess is that it's Paramiscus maniculatus, which is a, a deer mouse. What is the, the, could you repeat me the common name? A deer mouse. He's got a little rip on his ear. <laughs> so this one is 21 grams. Okay. okay. And is it um, that's what you call a pioneer species? And if yes, could you explain us why mm -hmm. did you call them? Yeah, so we consider these to be a pioneer species. This is the most common species that we've seen out on the lake beds. Um, these guys were showing up when there was 